Well, I reckon Isaac's also done a bit of damage to the Republican National Convention kicking off this week in Tampa. It's been put off slightly because the uh, storm's heading pretty much towards the convention hall. Uh, it's a chance when it finally gets underway for Mitt Romney and his campaigners to showcase their presidential candidate to the American people. Let's uh, speak to the U.S. journalist uh, Dan Rather from Tampa, ready for yet another convention. It must be about your 100th convention, I would have thought, uh, Dan. Um, you've seen them come and you've seen them go. Is this one feeling any more exciting or any more special? Well, exciting would not be the word I would choose, Jeremy, but it's special in this sense. The Republicans took a risk by choosing Tampa, Florida as the place for the convention, Tampa, Florida, during hurricane season. It was a roll of the dice that they have lost because the convention now is uncertain. I wouldn't say it's in chaos, but they've had to, in effect, cancel the first day, hoping to get a break in the weather, what it looks like they may. They were hoping this convention would give them a terrific momentum going into the stretch drive of the election. Uh, it's been a setback for them. They, some Republicans are convinced that the weather god is a Democrat, but uh, they <laughs> took a risk and uh, they lost that risk. Dan, it's a campaign, it would be fair to say, that has not yet set the world on fire, let alone uh, America. Um, it just hasn't really got the mo, the traction yet. Are they hoping that these, conve uh, these conventions, uh, the Republicans this week, Democrats in a week or so's time, start to captivate the American voting public? Uh, yes, they're hoping so, but again, I think that's a bet they will lose. Particularly in today's uh, intensive media environment, including the Internet, it's hard to captivate the American public with anything, much less... Uh, the infomercials, that's what conventions now are, as you know, Jeremy, knowing our system so well. It used to be that things were decided at these political conventions. That's long past. Now they are just uh, spin propaganda, if you will, and infomercials. But yes, each party is hoping that they would gain at least some additional momentum going into the fall campaign. The American political campaign, which I know must seem endless to those in other parts of the world, it seems endless to us, it's so long, <laughs> but it doesn't really begin to reach its climax until after the first Monday in September, what we call Labor Day, it's a national holiday. But each party is hoping to get a, at least a little bit of momentum. But it's very curious this time, Jeremy, uh, you know our system so well, that neither of these candidates has demonstrated they really like to campaign. There's no Bill Clinton or Ronald Reagan involved in on e in either encampment. So there has been a certain sense of malaise or ennui, if you will, that the American public, while interested in the campaign up to now, really hasn't caught on fire. I doubt that the conventions can do that, but each party is hoping. Dan, you talked about the, infom the infomercials, the propaganda, the spinning and so on. It it's, it's probably bigger than it's ever been in terms of funding and spending and money raised. Never has quite so much money been thrown at two campaigns. And they've been right. nastier and a, as negative as any we've seen in modern times. And yet they are both promoting two seemingly rather mild-mannered men. Well, uh, that's the irony of it, Jeremy. And you've hit it right in the bullseye. Keep in mind that this will be our first two to three billion dollar, that's with a B, presidential campaign. Now set aside the question for the moment, it's a big set aside, who is giving that money to whom expecting to get what? But in a two plus, maybe three billion dollar election campaign, there are almost unlimited resources, particularly on the Republican side, but the Democrats are not without their resources, to pour that money into negative campaigning, really nasty campaigning, primarily television commercials. And this campaign already has been nasty enough to choke a buzzard. And we're not even into the stretch drive yet. Uh, I've been covering American political campaigns since the mid-1950s. And we've seen really dirty campaigns, negative campaigns before. But nothing compared to this one so far. And again, emphasizing we're still in the early stages. And still, whatever they throw at it in terms of money and nastiness and campaigning of every sort, and they're still neck and neck. There's nothing to choose between these two guys. <laughs> well, it's true, Jeremy. 
uh, that you know some uh, American politician once said, "Mother uh, milk, uh, money, money is the mother's milk of politics," and of course uh, Will Rogers, our great uh, late humorist, said, "Politics has got so expensive it still takes a lot of money just to get beat with." Uh, but with these candidates, uh, we're in the midst, Jeremy, and make no mistake about it, of a very unpredictable, volatile campaign. It's close, shaded a bit in Obama's favor at the moment. But put me on record as saying that there's a long way to go, and Mitt Romney and the Republicans can win this election. I'm not saying they will, uh, but they have a chance to win this election. The battleground, of course, is for the, the middle, the independents and swing voters, and in, frankly, in only about eight or ten states. So while it seems huge, we're a big continental country, the electoral college is complicated, there's just about eight or ten states which could go either way, and within those states is the independent middle voters uh, that count, and that's where each of the parties will be targeting most of their messages, including the messages here at the convention. I'll no doubt see you uh, on election week uh, later in the year, but I have to admire you for going back for more and more at these conventions, however bad they are. Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Always good to see you, my friend. The legendary Dan Rather there.